All right, we're recording. Hello and welcome to the Avanti Entrepreneur Podcast. I am David Mamano. And what I do with the Avanti Podcast is I try to find just incredible entrepreneurs that are doing really unique things to make huge impact and scale their business at the same time. And also where the Avanti tribe, the Avanti family of listeners is able to learn from this person because they're willing to share the good, bad, and ugly. And, uh, and today I have in the show, uh, it's just a tremendous person, a friend who I've known for five years, we figured out, right? So, uh, and a very successful businessman, Todd Duncan. Todd, welcome to the show. David, good to be with you and uh, excited for our time together. Really appreciate it. I met you about five years ago. We figured out it was 19, or 19 where am I? That was uh, <laughs> 2015, right? right. Uh, at Darren Hardy's uh, High Performance Elite Forum, right? Uh, which means you just get to pay more. But no, it was really, <laughs> it was, the content was definitely uh, upgraded to the next level. And, uh, and I think Darren would even admit to the content was great, but man, those, the connections and the friendships that we've made Huge. were even, even better, I think. You know, like here we are five years later still talking. So for those of you that don't know Todd Duncan, he's, he's kind of a big deal. I'm going to read his bio and we're going to dig in and learn a little bit more about him. So Todd Duncan is a sales and leadership entrepreneur with over 5 million students around the globe. And he has mentored and taught and, uh, he, that he has mentored and taught in all facets of business. In his first career move, he became a real estate broker and a licensed mortgage broker, successfully negotiating and financing over 5,000 real estate transactions in 12 years. He then took that success and launched a high trust company with a vision of transforming how professionals build high performance businesses and lives. Todd has spent his life teaching and equipping professionals with the power of high trust as the key catalyst in achieving their dreams and impacting their teams. As a leading authority on trust, he helps leaders accelerate emotional connection with their teams and equips them to lead with purpose, improving conviction and ownership of the mission. Todd is a highly sought after game changing speaker, presenting solutions for the real life challenges people face daily. And he gives them wisdom, confidence, and a plan to get more out of your business and your life. His mantra is trust yourself, your relationships, your faith, and your future. When you do that, you set in motion a universe of possibilities. He is the author of 17 uh, books, including a New York Times bestseller, two New York Times bestsellers. One is Time Traps, Proven Strategies for Swamp Salesperson, and his game-changing book, High Trust Selling, Make More Money in Less Time with Less Stress. Todd has been featured in the New York Times, Wall Street Journal, Sydney Morning Herald, the Los Angeles Times, the Daily Telegraph, the Seattle Times, Entrepreneur Magazine, Success Magazine, Fox, and CNN, among many other media sites and publications. Todd and his company are actively involved in supporting our country's military through the American Warrior Initiative Boot Camp and the, and the Brain Treatment Cancer Raising, um, oh, Brain Treatment Cancer Center raising, I'm sorry, Brain Treatment Center raising millions of dollars to help active, retired, and wounded soldiers. Todd, that is just a beautiful biography. Congratulations <laughs> on everything that you're doing to impact the world. I love it. Yeah, it just reminds me of how powerful our lives can be, David, you know, when we get purposeful and passionate about what we do. So thanks for setting that up. It's beautiful. Yeah, no, thank you for doing it. Uh, so you're, you know, since we've met, you really focused your mission and your business, you know, on trust, which is wonderful because, you know, you hear a lot of, uh, you, know, uh, you know, professional trainers focusing on, you know, sales focusing on leadership, right? Focusing on marketing. Uh, but you're focusing on trust, which I would imagine, you know, if you have trust, all those other things fall into place, right? <laughs> you know? So how, how did you happen to think of, you know, or, or I guess what made you think that, um, that you know, uh, our, our country and the world needed more trust in everything that we're doing? Well, I, I think, David, uh, all you have to do is you have to look at, you know, the world in which we live and you have to look at, at doubt. You have to look at companies that have disengagement with their employees that don't trust their leaders. You have to look at leaders that don't trust themselves. You have to look at businesses and verticals that don't trust each other. You have to, you have to understand, I think, at the core that there's nothing more important than trust. The trust is actually the superpower that any leader can have because if, if you trust your team and your team trusts you, then you can create this ripple effect. If your team doesn't trust you, it's, it's smoke and mirrors and they're going to be busy, but they're not going to be productive and they're not going to fulfill the mission and the purpose, you know, of the organization. If you get that down to just key relationships, you know, I think the, the, the issue on trust is um, it's the hardest thing to gain, right? And so if a leader gains trust, if a, a person gains trust, a sales professional gains trust, 
then they can move closer to deeper relationships, what I call connected relationships. And when you have connected relationships, you have performance, you have engagement, you have loyalty, and you actually have ambassadorship that flourishes at every level. When we look at where we are right now, trust is also the easiest to lose. All you have to do is have one gaffe that's substantial and you can you know, have a setback that you've got to recover from. And, and leaders need to be aware of the fact that, that actions and words are important. I mean, what you say and what you do have to be in alignment and they have to be congruent or people show up on your payroll and they don't trust you. So when they don't trust you, they don't engage the, the core values of the company. And I think the final thing is, is we got to cherish it. I mean, we got to hold on to it. If you look at, at, at any break in trust between two human beings, between a leader and his team, between a team and another part of the team, between a husband and a wife, a father and a son. I mean, if you look at the entire kind of ecosystem of, of personal connection at every level possible, um, trust makes everything easier. No trust or low trust makes everything harder. So it just, uh, it, it's, it's, it's that one word that if you really own it and you really understand it, you can do anything you want in the world. You can do anything you want. And it separates you and differentiates you in ways. It gives you uh, personal fulfillment, personal confidence, and actually attracts people. You look at a brand that is known for trust and quality, people are attracted to that brand, both customers and potential employees. So I think that's why we're fired up on it. And especially in the world in which we live right now today, you know, in, in, as we head into the summer, you can see how important trust is worldwide. Oh, uh, do, you, do you know the statistics or are able to take an educated guess about, uh, you know, what percentage of, of, of companies in America uh, are trusted? Like, you know, how many people are working for a company that they trust? Any idea on that? Well, I, I, can, give you an, I can give you a couple of, of fairly large kind of samples, but I'll try to, to make it really deep. If we look at the informed public and we look at the general public and we look at trust in sectors, um, I can tell you right now that America in the last 18 months had the steepest decline in trust as measured by those two populations, the informed public and the general public. Um, China, Brazil, um, Australia, you know, fully developed countries also are having significant lapses in trust. And all you have to do is, is understand that what I'm telling you right now is probably 18 months old. And if I bring it to fast forward, you can see that we still have that issue, right? Some do, some don't, some trust, some don't. Some countries, you know, do it well and some countries do it poorly. In the financial services sector, we're in our sixth year of decline. And uh, it's very, very interesting when you, th when you stop and think about that. One of the stats that I heard from the Edelman Trust Barometer, which is one of the resources that we use to, to govern intellectual property in our company, was that roughly 66% of those that are employed have some trust issue with the, their supervisor all the way up to the CEO of the company. And that is, I mean, that's big. That is big. 38% are disengaged from the company's purpose when they show up for a paycheck. Pretty substantial. And, and, and why do you think that is? Do you think uh, that, that the employees, you know, feel that, you know, the executive team is, is hiding things behind the curtain? Uh, and, and, and are they, right? I mean, it, what, uh, how, do, how, how is that happening, right? Yeah, so I, I, at the end of the day, I think that, you know, when you look at culture, right? Culture, culture um, if it's done intentionally, can be developed with a, a vision and, and a purpose, right? But so often culture is the byproduct of not establishing what the company wants to be and what it wants to be known for. So when you look at an organization that says that one of their, their key core values is transparency and vulnerability. Those are two words that most people think of at face value as being negative. You mean we gotta be transparent, we've gotta be vulnerable. Those are, those, are, those are usually thought of as statements of weakness. When in fact a transparent relationship and a relationship that is vulnerable from a leader to a follower and from a follower to a leader are the most high trust relationships that you can have. When people stop long enough to be vulnerable and, uh, and, and be honest, right? And, and let their yeses be yeses and their noes be no, they understand the power of connected relationship. And here's the, here's the challenge. If we don't have the hard conversations, they become harder. And I think that when we look at connected leadership, you know, one of the big things that, that I'm looking at right now is connection. And if you can be authentic and transparent, it's not weakness. If I can ask somebody on my team how they're doing and be empathic and compassionate, and I can understand that particularly in the markets that we find ourselves right now, um, you know, in the middle of the year that, that we're in, 
it's like critical that I give people authority and permission to be honest and transparent. If, if I can help, help you at a point in which you're feeling weak or you're feeling scared or you have fright or a host of those things, and I can come into the picture and have you know that I care about you. See, if I take care of the people on my team, not because I need them to respond, but it's a natural law called reciprocation. If I take care of the people on my team, they will trust me and therefore will do more for the organization and obviously for the shareholders. So I think it's, it's a host of those things, but it starts with transparency and vulnerability. Um, I totally agree with you. And it, it seems like since um, I'll say social media, the digital world uh, it has really taken off, it's kind of brought down a lot of curtains, right? Where there seemed there was like, there used to be like a lot, a lot of blind trust, right? And a lot of our institutions that were considered sacred, right? If I said sacred, you could say our religious institutions, you could say our educational institutions, financial government institutions, right? And now, it, it, you know, uh, 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 digital media, social media uh, is gotten behind a lot of those curtains and exposed a lot of stuff, right? Uh, which is making people uh, question, you know, can I trust these institutions, right? And my feeling is, you know, there, there's always some bad apples, right? Education, religion, uh, government, where, where the majority of people are pretty darn good people, and most of them you could trust you know, pretty well, if not 100%. Um, but I think those bad eggs are getting exposed a little bit more, uh, you know, what's going on behind the curtain. And maybe that is good in a way, because now it's forcing them to be more transparent, right? It's forcing them to be more honest. It's forcing them to really not hide anything behind the curtain and, 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 and maybe incorporate trust as one of their core values. What, what's your thinking about that? Do you, do you see social media as an impact? I see digital noise as an impact, you know, and I think by extension, um, then social media has that noise, right? And I think there's, there's so much noise going on that we're not actually hearing each other. And I think that there's um, a lot of um, there's a lot of gap in purpose and skill, which is masked by social, you know, quote connection. Um, but what's interesting is I think at, at the very you know at the very basis of of everything that we do, we've got to be in a mindset of if I don't if I don't take care of you, you won't take care of me. If I don't be honest with you, you won't be honest with me. If I don't approach you from a position of compassion and connection, then there's no way that you're going to be able to um, be open to what I do, whether it's social or not. So I think that, you know, at the end of the day, I think that it gets down to this idea that, wow, can you hear that? I'm sorry. That's right. Yeah, maybe edit that out. Life, I life happens. It, I think, yeah, I think it gets down to um, what are you saying, right? And, and I think that in the, the spirit of uh, connection and trust, it is the the approach to honesty and legitimacy and that heartfelt caring. Um, I, I tell people all the time today, David, that emotion is more effective than promotion. You know, that, that it, you have to turn up the emotion in your business relationships. You have to turn up the emotion in your one-on-one -on -one relationships. You have to be less about promotion and more about um, that type of connection. And we know from Gallup um, that if a company does that, they have a 26% higher margin in gross revenues. And if they do that as a stated core value, emotional connection with their clients, they have upwards of 85% growth in sales year on year in same store, same branch kind of experiences. So whether it's social or not, the, the key has to be connection. It has to be this relational connection. And if I can support that, with social and digital and add value. Like right now I'm doing um, a mindset moment every day on social. I'm not selling anything. You know, I, I come up with a two or three minute video that really is designed to help somebody understand a moment of mindset. And mindset's everything right now in today's market. If we don't have um, the kind of mindset that is, that is geared to staying positive, to staying forthright, to staying in relationship, if we don't have that, then we have nothing. And I think uh, this is a good time to reassess that. It's a good time to rethink it. Yep, I agree. So, uh, so you know, when you are when you're coaching somebody at your events, uh, you know, what are what are you telling leaders? You know, what are the top five, ten things, whatever the number is, that they can do to instill trust in their team with their team? Yeah. So I think one of the things is is a culture of of faith over fear. 
right? And, and I think that one of the, the, the keys there is um, to understand that, that a company that has a deep sense of faith in each other, okay, is a company that will stay together, work together, and survive together no matter what happens in the economy, sector, or anything like that. So we have to feed faith. Faith is, um, at its most rudimentary definition, some sense of conviction in the future. Right. And so a leader's responsibility in any time, but especially in times of challenge, is to pave the way for how we're going to get through this and how we're going to grow through it. So that's key. Now, simultaneously, what I need to do is I need to look at how do I squash the fear? Right. And how do I starve the fear? How do I how do I have people on my team feel more confident about where they are? How do I right now in times of, you know, global turmoil, potentially, how do I, how do I have my team understand that this could be our defining moment? I mean, how we do this right now, there's a pizza company that I saw last night in New York called sauce and sauce changed their entire model in the last 72 hours and they started delivering pizzas to hospitals and healthcare institutions and in a couple days apparently had delivered 3,000 pizzas to healthcare workers that are just you know on edge right now trying to get through this and you being you know from New York understand that and so how do you change an entire company there was a manufacturing company that ditched their product that they have manufacturing set up for, and they recognized that there was a shortage of, of sanitizer, right? There these, these bottles of Purell, there was, a, there was a shortage. So they changed their entire manufacturing process, brought back half the staff, staff they laid off, and now they're manufacturing hand sanitizer. It's just for right now. But can you imagine being an employee of a company that all of a sudden sees a need, shifts their, their deal, they put they put relationship before revenue, and they know that this is a moment that will be defining. If, if, if a leader can be that kind of person that can create a defining moment for people on his or her team, then you're going to have loyalty and trust that is, that, that is almost impossible to ever sever. So those are some things that come to mind. I mean, we want people to, to realize that when, they, when they're involved in our organization, that they're part of something special, no matter how many speed bumps we have, no matter how many course corrections we have to make, no matter how many you know, ups and downs we have, we're on a mission and we're gonna have a defining moment in times of challenge, which is what we're having right now. Yeah, yeah, as we're recording this, uh, we are in early April and it's, uh, you know, New York is at the, at, uh, and hopefully at the peak of the coronavirus yeah. and, uh, and, and uh, ideally the whole, the whole country is, uh, on its way down from it by the time this airs, if not completely uh, done with it, right? Yeah. Uh, we, we pray, uh, but you're right. Some of these companies that are standing out are saying, okay, our, our, our game has completely changed. What can we do to stay alive? But they're not thinking about the success. They're thinking about the value that they can bring, right? And I love the, the, the pizza shop sauce, you know, I don't know what they're doing. If, if it's like, you know, buy a pizza, we're going to donate one of the hospital workers, but whatever it is. And then you see restaurants, you know, a couple of weeks ago when they would do a delivery, they have a, they uh, include a roll of toilet paper, right? Which I thought was really creative, right? And yeah, I mean, we have a couple of companies uh, right, right down the street from me that have altered their business model uh, to make hand sanitizer, you know, it was uh, beverage companies, whiskey companies, right? And uh, yeah, I don't know if the whiskey is going to take like taste like hand sanitizer, in a couple months, <laughs> but we'll drink it anyway because they because we yeah. love what, love what they did. Uh, yeah. But you're right though; that's the kind of defining moment that whoever that leader was or the leadership team was that that made that call. That is going to ignite the team, right? That's going to endear them, and they're, so, they're going to be so proud to work for a company like that, right? It's almost like working, you know, playing for the playing for uh, the, you know the, the Green Bay Packers back in the day with Vince Lombardi, right? I mean. Or, you know, I'll say the Buffalo Bills with Marv Levy, even though we didn't win yet. But <laughs> there, was, there was magic there. There was magic there because uh, there was a greater purpose than just getting the job done, right? And that's what great leaders do. You know, what's really super interesting, too, is, is um, whenever we have moments like this that potentially redefine us, the key is not, um, you know, that moment in time, although that is huge, right? The key is what did we learn from that? And how do we continue that thinking when we get back into normalcy, right? 
And so when you look at companies that have a committed social cause, when you know that companies have a, you know, a percentage of revenues they donate to this or, you know, buy this and, and we'll donate this or that whole kind of social cause, they end up having different levels of engagement, different loyals of, levels of loyalty with their team, different levels of engaged employee performance. And they have an attraction factor in the marketplace that companies that, that, that don't do that or forget that that's what they did when times were tough, um, don't have simply. And so if I can come back and say, okay, we did this during that time, how do we learn from that? And what can we do as a company so that we always have a little element of social value that we're creating, right? And if you do that, then you have all those positive things that it's easy to trust a company that cares about other people and delivers. And that's really the simplicity of the high trust message. Fantastic. So what advice, Todd, would you have for, uh, you know, uh, a uh, young adult who uh, you know just started a company and they're they're you know initial building blocks, creating the DNA. Uh, you're sitting down. This this young person said, "Hey, hey, Mr. Duncan, can I take you out for coffee and pick your brain?" Uh, and you were mentoring this person during that that breakfast. Uh, what what would you tell that person on, on how to really get it right from the beginning? Yeah, so I think the things that that, that come to my mind are. Um, I've got, to, I've got to have a reason, an intention, a purpose for why I'm doing what I'm doing. You know, there's two things that entrepreneurs have to look at. They have to look at where and they have to look at why. Okay, where am I going and, and why am I going there? And uh, I, was, I was writing something uh, before we jumped on and I'm just going to pull it up for a second and, and see, if I can, uh, see if I can share it with you. But it was like, I, yeah, I wrote down that direction is more important than perfection. And I said, you know, when I look at high quality leaders, the common traits that they have are on purpose. Several things come to mind. Number one, they are fit. They embody fitness in the areas of their lives that matter most. Second is they're fast. They understand that anything can be improved and they are motivated to cause those improvements sooner than later, but with a mind to quality so they can minimize the amount of do-overs. And then the third, and this is the part that I think really answers the question. If I were talking to a, a young adult, I would say the third is vision. They are constantly looking forward, not backward. They let go of yesterday, which requires a little bit of forgiveness. They don't fear tomorrow, which requires a little bit of faith. And they win today, which requires focus and presence. And to the entrepreneur that's starting out, why are you doing what you're doing? And where are you going? And how do you focus on today while simultaneously understanding the power of vision? Right. And, you know, I think of a, as myself as a young entrepreneur, um, I learned a lot of hard lessons the hard way. And um, I over delegated and, and over empowered. Um, I did not understand the value of, of checklists and, and, you know, regimen and, and routine and rhythm. Um, I, I let other people do things that was the right idea, but I didn't have the foundation in place so that I could trust that delegation. Um, but at some point, you can't be an entrepreneur if it's only you. You can't be an entrepreneur if you're going to try and scale a business and you don't understand that it requires human capital beyond you. And I guess the other thing I would tell an entrepreneur, and you know this, having hung out with me and Darren and us with you, is, is you, don't, you, don't, um, you don't acquiesce your standards. You, you don't let people into a culture that are bad people, that, that might have some character default. You don't get oversold in an interview. You pause and you slow down. Uh, you have a, a team that says, you know, if we have any doubt in this person, we don't hire. And if we have any doubt as a team, after we hire, sadly, in this person's ability, we either have to put them somewhere else in the company or we have to get rid of them. And I think, I think too often people are, are quick to hire and slow to fire. And, and yet, you know, at the end of the day, we don't want to have a, a bunch of turnover. So, you know, those are the things I think that just, man, if I was a young kid sitting at the foot of somebody that's, you know, had a business for 30 years and, and had some crash and burns and learned some lessons, those are some of the things I'd really want to know quickly. And I guess, you know, having two young boys that are, I think, entrepreneurs, it's passion. You know, these guys have passion. And if you're passionate, um, you don't have to worry about getting it done the right way every time. You just have to make sure the passion stays large and you will have the, you'll have the stamina to get through it. Grit and vision are the two biggest things I would tell that young entrepreneur. Grit and vision. Grit and vision. Todd Duncan, this is super, super fantastic. Um, you are a man of faith, a man of trust, and just a all around incredible businessman in person. And I appreciate all that you're doing. And I appreciate you really sharing your journey 
uh, and, and a lot of the success tips that you picked up along the way. Really appreciate it. I'm wish you, wishing you continued success for many, many, many more years. Good to be with you, David. I'm uh, proud of you and what you're doing to help the leaders win and whatever we do to help count on us all the time. Thank you, Todd. Hey, if any of our uh, listeners or viewers want to learn more about you, what's the best way to do that and or get in touch with you? Probably the best way is just my social handle, which is Todd Duncan Official. That's Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn, Todd Duncan Official. And uh, we uh, we'll, we sweep that about 10 times a day. And if you want to get in touch with us, that's the best way. Great. And then your, uh, your website, what's your website address? Uh, ToddDuncan.com or HighTrust.com. Love it. And Todd, you are so successful that you're, you're uh, obviously have a crew outside your office putting on some, uh, you know, additional <laughs> floors. So congratulations. <laughs> I'm sorry. It must be, it must be Monday at 1230 on the East Coast or on the West Coast. It's the trash truck. <laughs> oh, there we go. There we go. All right. Appreciate your honesty. <laughs> yeah, why not? And it's trust, right? I, knew I could trust you. I, knew I could trust you. Todd, thank you so much. And Avanti thank family, you. thank you so much for listening. If you want more podcasts that I've done over the years, go to VantiEntrepreneur.com. Ton of great resources there. Thank you so much again, everybody. Have a great day and stay awesome. See ya.